have non-technical users who need to efficiently create and maintain Salesforce data while reducing the number of clicks they make, how do you solve for that? I'm Jennifer Lee, Lead Admin Evangelist, and I invite you to watch How I Solved It, where we deep dive into a business challenge and show how one awesome admin chose to solve it. Today, I'm joined by awesome admin Kim Strauss. Welcome to How I Solved It. Hi, happy to be here. So let's get to know you a bit better before we dive into your use case and solution. Now, how did you get started with Salesforce? Well, I've worked in the nonprofit sector for a long time, and I've worked with different databases. And at one point, I was working for a global nonprofit where I led the charge of migrating from an old donor database onto Salesforce's nonprofit success pack and PSP. And so that's where I learned Salesforce. I loved it right away. It was so intuitive and very flexible. It was actually fun to learn. And from there, my learning just grew and grew. And then I was a Salesforce consultant to nonprofits for a little while. And but I, I really wanted to return to the nonprofit sector. And that's where I am now. I'm at the James Beard Foundation as their senior director of Salesforce. That's great. And what advice do you have for folks who want to pursue Salesforce, but um, in the nonprofit space? Yeah, well, first, you know, I would say if you're totally new to the nonprofit world, I would do a little homework, you know, maybe learn a bit about nonprofits, how they work, uh, what are the different ways that they fundraise, who are their main stakeholders, what type of data would a nonprofit need to track? And then once you have a little context, then spend a lot of time learning NPSP. Mm -hmm. And you can do that through trailheads. There's a lot of videos out there. And I would certainly join a nonprofit user group. Um, you'll go to the meetings, you'll learn the nonprofit lingo, you'll start to understand some of the challenges that nonprofits face. And um, yeah, there's a lot of in-person events. There's a whole world of nonprofit Salesforce people and they're very smart and they're very, very generous with their time and their sharing of knowledge. Yeah, the NS, um, the nonprofit service pack is really a different data model than your normal Salesforce. It is, yeah. So it's a, there's a little learning curve, but it's very mm -hmm. doable with all the resources out there. Great. So Kim, share with us the business problem that you're trying to solve for. So the James Beard Foundation is a nonprofit and like all nonprofits, we have a board of directors and the board of directors meet several times a year. So I had built a community for the board members where they can log in and they can access all of the materials that they need for each board meeting. So one request was that they wanted to see attendants who uh, attended each board meeting. And so there were a few ways I could have approached that. I could have just typed it out and uploaded it you know, into a file in the portal, but I really wanted it to be very accessible. They didn't have to click around. They just you know, could see the attendance right away. So um, I also thought this was a good opportunity to build something that we can use internally to track the RSVPs leading up to the meeting. Mm -hmm. So I built a screen flow for this and I'd love to show you how it works. Yes, we admins love to nerd out, so please show us. So we already had a custom object called board meeting. And then for this project, I created a child object called board attendance. And we're gonna use the screen flow to create new board attendance records, you know, which are related records. So uh, we have two options, take attendance and update attendance. The first one is, you know, we would use this leading up to the board members to track the RSVPs as they come in. And then once the meeting happens, the next day type of thing, we can use this button to then edit the board attendance records. So let's click the first one. And so up pops a list of all of our board members. So I'm gonna select the ones that I wanna RSVP for. So we're going to select the names and then we're going to select one RSVP status to, sign, to assign to all of them. So let's say these people told us that they accepted the invitation. 
and they're going to come in person. So click next. And here we go. Our related records got created. So this is a very simple object. We have a lookup to the contact name. We have the pick list status that we selected. And then it's also tied to the board meeting record that we're on. And then we're also grabbing the board meeting date. So we could keep going like that. Let's say some other people RSVP'd. Uh, maybe they, these folks declined and so on. It keeps creating the related records all at once. And so now afterwards, if we need to edit the status, this time it brings up, the data table brings up the board attendance records. And here's the same process. We can select a few and we want to change the status from accepted to attended because we know they actually attended. And there you go. So what I like about this process, about this solution, is that we're creating a bunch of records at one time with very few clicks. So it's really a very efficient way to create a bunch of records as opposed to you know putting the new button up here and maybe my colleague would have to click the new button like 30 times for 30 board members. That's, that, that's a lot of work and it's, uh, it's not efficient. So I love that the data table allows us to create many records at one time. So I'd love to show you the flow now So here's the screen flow. It's, um, it's not a terribly complicated flow. It's actually the same process on both sides. So we have the first uh, element is a screen. And I will say that I'm using something called Quick Choice, which um, is not out of the box Salesforce. Uh, the only reason I'm using it is because I like the visual of these big cards. And also, uh, once you click on it, it, it automatically goes to the next screen. You don't need the next button here. So, you know, I prefer the, the fewer clicks, the better. And I got this from unofficialsf.com. So we have the quick choice and um, I'm writing the two options that are in that box, take attendance or update. So you choose the button and then we have a decision, you know, which button did you press? Did we take attendance or click the other button? And so then we have the take attendance pass. And so we're getting our board members, uh, which means we're, get, we're getting from the contact object. And for us in our org, we have a pick list value that indicates if they're a board member or not. And then we're grabbing all of those records. And then in the next step, we're going to present the results of this get in the data table. And so here's the out of the box data table. We're uh, exposing the results, like I said, from the get. And for our purposes, we only need to show the name of the person. I didn't need to pull in any other columns. And so this is important as you're, as the user is selecting the different, the multiple contact names, we're saving those selections in a collection variable called var selected. I typically call all of my variables, I use the prefix var, just so it's easy to sort and search through and you know I know that I created them. So we're saving all the selections there. And then the RSVP status is simply a radio button that is pulling from my board attendance object. It's pulling the pick list value that's, that's already there. And so next we're gonna loop through the var selected collection. just like that. And so for each um, record, we're going to, we're sort of preparing to create the board attendance records. So we have a single record variable, which I called var board attend. And for each field in the board attendance, we're gonna, we're deciding what we wanna populate it with. So for attendee name, we're stamping the contact ID from the current item. The board meeting, uh, we want to tie the board attendance records to the correct board meeting, uh, which is indicated by the record ID. The status is the status from uh, the screen that we selected. And then we're adding everything to a collection. And then the next screen just uh, creates the board attendance records from this collection. 
like this over here. And then the next um, path from the decision is basically the same. Uh, instead of getting the contacts, we're just getting the board attendance records and we're getting the attendance records that are associated with the meeting that we're on. And again, we're grabbing all of them. And this is different than the other path. We're just making sure that there are board attendance records because if there aren't, then there's nothing to update. So then we're showing the results uh, in the data table and saving, and then we're going through and selecting the board attendance records. We're saving them in a collection variable. We're using the same exact um, pick list value. And it's the same thing. We're looping through those selected records and we're just gonna assign the new uh, RSVP status. And this is to make sure that we're grabbing the right board select, the board attendance record, and we're adding everything to a collection and so the next step is to update the RSVP status in an update element, and which is right here. This was the collection uh, from the assignment. And then a little thank you screen at the end. And that's the solution. So to recap, I created a custom object to track the data. And then I built a screen flow using a data table that allows us to create and edit multiple records at one time with very few clicks. And therefore we eliminated manual data entry. Thank you, Kim, for showing us your solution. I love how you use automation to make it easy to create and maintain records while reducing unnecessary clicks in a quick and easy user interface. You just saw how Kim Strauss solved the business challenge of providing a simple user interface for her non-technical users to create and maintain Salesforce records while using minimal clicks, and also presenting information in a clean and easy way using a screen flow and a custom object. I love the simplicity of that solution. You can always find videos like this by going to admin.salesforce.com or by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you will never miss another episode of How I Solved It. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Awesome, man.